Hi everybody, Ms. Dietrich here helping you understand the relationship of division and subtraction. This is Lesson 4 from Engage New York, Module 4. We're going to take a look at a simple example just to help you uh, get started with this concept. We're going to take a look at 20 divided by 4 equals 5. Now I'm sure you've had a lot of experience with this. If we're going to take 20 and break it up into four separate groups, you can see that we have 5 in each group. That's not a difficult concept to understand. But let's rethink this as repeated subtraction. So if we take 20 and we subtract 4, let's take that away. Okay, that's gone. This is what we have left. If we, uh, so we just did this. So if we take 4 more away, okay, we just did this, and take 4 more away, that's this, take 4 more away, and then if we take four more away, all right, so all that's gone and we're left with nothing. Now, here's how you should think of it. If we do 20 minus 4, we had 16 squares left. Then we did the 16 minus 4, we had 12 squares left, and so on until we got to 0. We subtracted 5 times, so the quotient is 5. Now, do you recognize the relationship between 20 divided by 4 equaling 5? and 20 minus 4 minus 4 minus 4 minus 4 minus 4 equaling 0? And if so, what's the relationship? So here's what I want you to kind of pay attention to. How many times do you see this if we count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, right? Isn't that what we have for a quotient here? All right, let's take a look at these examples. Now what I suggest you do, we're going to look at this one first. So I'm going to suggest you hit the pause button and maybe try to work these out on scrap paper and then check back to see if you have the right answers. But let's look at the example first so you know what you're supposed to do. The dividend here is 24, so you see the dividend here is 24. And you can see that we're ending up with 4 as an answer. So do you see how we're subtracting 4, subtracting 4, subtracting 4, subtracting 4, subtracting 4, subtracting 4? So you have to ask yourself, how many times did we do that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we had to draw a model of that, we end up with the six groups. So if we start out with 24 and we're subtracting 4 each time, so do you see the 4 right here? Subtract 4 again and so on until you're left with nothing. That's how you end up getting the idea that x is equal to 6. x is equal to 6. So go ahead and try the ones that are left, pause it, and then check back. All right, so we're assuming that you paused it, so let's see how you did. Did you recognize that you needed 36? as the starting number, and then you had to figure out what am I subtracting? Well, we're subtracting 6, and then you have to figure out how many times do you have to keep subtracting that until you have nothing left over. So if we subtract 6 again, subtract 6 again, sometimes it's helpful to, before we reveal that, to think of the uh, diagram that might go with that. If you, keep, so if you start out with 36, and you keep subtracting 6, so here's the first group of 6, the second group of 6, and so on, you're going to end up getting six groups. So in other words, you have to do that six times to end up with nothing left over, so the value for x is equal to six. Now if we take a look at number three, we know we're starting out with 28, and we're going to be subtracting seven a certain number of times until we get to zero. If we take a look at the bar model that goes with that, we're going to take that 28, which is represented here, subtract seven, subtract seven again, subtract 7 again, and subtract another 7 until you have nothing left over. So that ended up being four groups. So you needed that four times. All right, let's see how you did with the rest. Since we're almost out of time, we'll do the reveal. Check your answers. And hopefully you're understanding the relationship between division and subtraction.